Benito Pablo Juarez Garcia was Mexico's 26th president, serving from 1858 to 1872. A judge and liberal reformer, Juarez led the Mexican people through the turbulent eras of the Reform War and the Second French Intervention, and is the only Mexican president to have an annual Mexican national holiday formally proclaimed in his honor. Let's explore. Benito Juarez was born in 1806 to a Zapotec family in San Pablo Guiratao in Oaxaca, in the south of Mexico, which was then still the Spanish colony of New Spain. The municipality of Juarez's hometown was later formally renamed Guiratao de Juarez in his honor. Benito's parents died when he was only three, leaving the young boy to the care of his grandparents and then upon their death to an uncle. At the age of 12, Juarez decided to walk to the city of Oaxaca because, as he recounts in his memoirs, one of his sheep was stolen and he was worried his uncle would be mad. It certainly didn't hurt that the big city offered a chance for the young Juarez to get an education. The city was later formally renamed Oaxaca de Juarez in his honor. Once in the city, Juarez took a job as a domestic servant in exchange for funding for an education, a common practice in the city at the time. Juarez would go on to join first the local seminary, and later the newly founded Oaxaca Institute for Arts and Sciences, where he would graduate with a law degree in 1834. The institute was later formally renamed the Benito Juarez Autonomous University of Oaxaca in his honor. Juarez entered politics in 1831, winning election to the Oaxaca City Council. Juarez continued to practice law and to climb the political ladder, becoming a member of the Oaxaca State Legislature in 1845 and being sent to the National Legislature in 1847 during the Mexican-American War. Later that same year, Juarez was elected governor of the state of Oaxaca, where he would serve until 1852. Though Juarez supported the war effort as governor, after the fall of Mexico City, Juarez refused to provide refuge to General and President Santa Ana, as Juarez knew the war had already been lost. When Santa Ana returned to power in 1853, he exiled Juarez from the country. Juarez would wind up living alongside other exiled politicians in New Orleans, working at a cigar factory. The city of New Orleans later formally dedicated this statue in his honor. While in New Orleans, Juarez teamed up with other liberals to draft a plan to remove Santa Ana from power. This eventually evolved into the Plan of Ayutla, one of many such plans in Mexican history that were essentially declarations of principles written to support an armed rebellion. This rebellion succeeded, and Juarez's ally, Juan Alvarez, became interim president, followed by another liberal, Ignacio Comonfort, as president under the new constitution of 1857. Comonfort appointed Juarez as president of the Supreme Court of Justice, a position that put Juarez next in line to become president of Mexico. As expected, Juarez was a central figure in this period known as La Reforma, the Reform. Most notably, Juarez helped draft a law declaring all citizens equal before the law and limiting the privileges of the army and the Catholic Church. This law was formally named the Juarez Law in his honor. The Juarez Law would quickly gain opponents, however, and in December 1857, General Felix Maria Zuluaga and his conservative allies, backed by the church and the military, imposed a series of demands on President Comonfort. Comonfort initially caved to the conservatives and arrested several government leaders, including Juarez, but later released them before being forced to resign. In January 1858, Juarez fled Mexico City to lead the remaining liberal forces as interim president, eventually establishing a stronghold in Veracruz. Thus began the Reform War between Juarez's liberals in Veracruz and a series of conservative presidents in Mexico City. The conservatives won many early victories, but the liberals maintained their power base and gained the support of the United States, negotiating a treaty that would have funded the liberal government in exchange for giving the U.S. military transit rights through Mexican territory. The treaty was controversial in both countries and never entered into force because the U.S. Senate refused to ratify it. Nevertheless, the U.S. did send ships to aid in the defense of Veracruz at the Battle of Anton Lizardo. On January 1, 1861, the liberals retook Mexico City, Juarez himself returned a week later. And though it wouldn't be built until the next century, the city's airport was later formally renamed the Benito Juarez International Airport in his honor. 1861 also saw the inauguration of Juarez's contemporary Abraham Lincoln, president of the USA during its civil war from 1861 to 1865. American sources often compare the two. Both Juarez and Lincoln came from a rural background, both practiced law, and both are traditionally numbered among their country's greatest leaders. While Lincoln was the tallest U.S. president, standing at 6 foot 4 or 193 centimeters, Juarez was the shortest Mexican president, at only 4 foot 6 or 137 centimeters. The two men served as president concurrently, and though they never met, they maintained a shared commitment to democracy on the continent. A bridge connecting Laredo, Texas to Nuevo Laredo, Tamaulipas was named the Juarez-Lincoln International Bridge in their honor. After re-establishing control of the capital, 
Juarez was elected to his own term as president in March 1861. The peace was short-lived. Britain, Spain, and France were angry that Juarez refused to pay the conservatives' debts, and the French sent into an invasion force to install a puppet emperor, Maximilian von Habsburg, with the support of the remaining conservative forces. Though initially repulsed at the Battle of Puebla on May 5, 1862, an event celebrated yearly as Cinco de Mayo, the French returned, and Juarez was once again forced to retreat from the capital, this time to the northern state of Chihuahua. The largest city in Chihuahua, then called El Paso del Norte, was later formally renamed Ciudad Juarez in his honor. Maximilian proved surprisingly progressive for a puppet emperor, sharing power with the legislature and maintaining some of Juarez's reforms. Unfortunately for Maximilian, this just meant the conservatives hated his policies, the liberals just hated having a monarch, and therefore nearly everyone hated him. Also, just as in the Reform War, Juarez had the support from the USA to the north. Initially, the US was preoccupied with his own civil war, but after its end in 1865, American President Andrew Johnson sent arms and money to the Juarez government, and eventually threatened war with France. The French forces supporting Maximilian began to withdraw in 1866, and by 1867, Emperor Maximilian was captured and executed, supposedly as retaliation for the imperial government's execution of Republican soldiers. Juarez once again retook Mexico City, and was restored as constitutional president. Today's 500 peso bills feature a representation of this restoration in his honor. Juarez ran for re-election in 1867, and proposed a number of constitutional reforms for a direct vote by the populace, including granting clergy the right to vote, and establishing a second legislative chamber. This outraged many politicians, since Juarez was trying to circumvent the existing process for constitutional amendments, but the point was moot since, although Juarez ran re-election, his reforms failed to pass. Juarez's last years in office proved difficult and controversial with local rebellions popping up and Juarez's government suppressing them by military force. Juarez's political opponents accused him of trying to build a dictatorship, a charge they were duplicated when Juarez ran for an unprecedented fourth term in 1871. Although Juarez got the most votes, no candidate was able to win a majority and the decision was sent to the legislature, which declared Juarez the victor over General Porfirio Diaz's no re-election campaign. Juarez continued his attempts to rule and reform Mexico, but after 14 and a half years in office, his health failed him at last. Juarez died of heart failure on July 18, 1872, becoming the only Mexican president to die of natural causes while in office. He was succeeded by Supreme Court President Sebastián Lerdo de Tejada. In 1876, Lerdo would be overthrown by Porfirio Díaz, who then went against his no re-election platform by serving seven terms. Even Diaz, though, could not undermine the magnitude of Juarez's legacy. Diaz constructed this monument, formerly named the Benito Juarez Hemicycle, in his honor. And as always, thanks for watching.